Hello and welcome to Big Lee's Miniature Adventures, home of the quarantined wargamer. I'm Big Lee and today I want to talk about solo wargaming. So many old grognards such as myself would have done solo gaming at some point in their many years. Um, but there's plenty out there that haven't and also plenty of newbies to the hobby who probably haven't really thought about the possibility of doing solo gaming. Now I've mentioned it plenty of times in passing in lots of my previous videos and of course the last 12 months have really brought solo wargaming to the fore. Um, and although today's video isn't about how to solo wargame, I did want to do a video about to advocate for it because I really do think it's such a, a good thing for uh, not just now during lockdown, but also beyond and into the future. I just think it's uh, it's something that I've only recently really got into in a big way, and I really do feel that it's a good thing for for your, your development as a gamer, but your your ability to learn and uh, your involvement in the hobby, understanding of the rules. So I really do think it's something that um, we should all try our hands at at one point or another. So briefly, what are the benefits of solo play? Well, first and foremost, it's better than not playing at all, especially at the moment when you perhaps you can't get down to your club or visit your friends. Um, uh, you know, and if you haven't got the technological options uh, open to you, or you've done those and you you know you want to try something different, um, then solo play is the way to go. Um, and the, the thing that I have learned over the last twelve months is they really give you a chance to delve dive deep into a set of rules to really get to understand them. You can play and replay situations until you've learned a particular set of rules. Um, uh, and so it's a really good tool for learning what you want to, what rule systems you want to learn, especially if you're doing something new. Um, the other advantage of solo role play, solo wargaming, if you can leave your table set up for a long period of time, um, it means that you can take your, t take your time over a game. You can t play over a p period of days having to think about it. Um, again, it gives you a chance to really ruminate on what you're doing and how you're doing it. You know, the tactics you're using or the particular set of rules or the unique uh, characteristics of the set of rules that you're playing. Um, another advantage is that when you're playing both sides, you get a chance to think how the enemy would think. You get to outwit yourself or at least try to um, now some people find that easier than others um, but you know essentially what you're trying to do is you're saying right um, what's the best scenario I can come up with well, hang on I can counter it like that so let's try this well, that's the best option of the lot you know that you, basically you're training yourself for when you're going to be facing a live opponent you know it's like playing chess you're thinking three or four moves ahead more than that um, uh, and and thinking right, what can they? Do? Oh, hang on, there's a there's a there's a weakness there. Let's try this strategy. Um, so you get a chance to test all that out um, and 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 play both sides of the game inside your head while you're playing a solo game. Um, and uh, you know that means you get to practice uh, at a tactical level. You get the you can try out strategies, see them fail, try them a different <coughs> way. Um, Obviously, without anyone seeing, so that when you turn up for your next game, you'll be an expert. So where's the best place to begin if you want a solo uh, war game? Well, I would just say go back to some of the older books. There's a lot of really good literature out there. Um, you know, the, the most obvious one being uh, one of the many versions of Don Featherstone's solo war games. This is a more up-to-date reprint, but if you've got the original, fantastic. Um, 1973 this came out so it's a little bit dated to say the least um, but it's still a really interesting read it gives you some really good ideas on on what you need to be thinking about if you want to do a set of solo rules and and it doesn't sometimes it may mean writing a set of rules sometimes it's just coming up with mechanisms to use the set of rules that you use now another really good book that i i, I found quite useful is um a military modeling guide to solo wargaming uh, by um, Stuart Asquith. Um, now this one's quite good because it's got a really good section on doing random terrain, talks about solo campaigns. More importantly for me, there was a section in there that is essentially a, 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 a sampling of Charles S. Grant's programmed wargames. Now if you've never got 
uh, seen that book. It's worth looking up, but you'd have to sell a kidney to be able to afford a copy of Charles S. Grant's Programme of War Games. It is pretty expensive, even though it's long, long out of print. Um, uh, I understand that there's a, a a modern reprint coming out. I hope so, because I'd really like to get my hands on a copy. And <laughs> rather amusingly, right at the back, there's even a section on uh, postal gaming by post, postal war gaming which is hilarious in this internet age, but you know, let's face it, the book was 1988, so uh, pre-internet age again. Interesting to read, um, and some really good ideas in there. Another one that I've picked up over the years, and I found it was quite, there was bits of it that I was really interested in, is um, uh, this particular book by uh, William Sylvester. Now, th this is quite a good one. Um, it, it's got a lot of information there about campaigns, um, not just land campaigns, but sea campaigns as well. Another book that I've found really useful is the, the Men of Woodby King's Rules, because there's a section in here called Mr. Babbage, and it's basically how to automate your armies. It's a very simple set of instructions that guide the, the guiding principles for how you're going to operate the enemies. And I actually found that quite an interesting and useful uh, way of approaching solo gaming. And then there's internet sources, so there's plenty of information out there online. You know, you're watching a video about solo wargaming, what I'd suggest is that go elsewhere on YouTube and you're bound to find plenty of other information about solo wargaming. Really useful, very good uh, information in there, some ideas, tips, places to look for other information. So definitely hunt around on on YouTube, but also there, there's some really good websites. The, the LoneWarGamer.com, uh, Journal of the Solo, Solo War Games Association. Well worth checking that out. There's lots of links and information on there, um, and um, you know there's tons. If you're having a good hunt around, you can find lots of uh, art, blog posts and and articles on how to solo war game with different ideas. Now. I didn't want to go into too much detail about how you solo war game, but I did think it's worth mentioning a few of my favourite techniques, things that I tend to use quite often, and they're nice and simple. The simplest one being a simple, straightforward 50-50 rule. If you're presented, if you're, you know, your enemy that you're playing is presented with a binary choice, it's either this or this. Roll the dice, 50-50. Completely randomises the result, no prejudice involved, and then you have to respond to whatever the dice have told you. Um, you know, a little bit more complicated is you can introduce things like chance and tactical cards. There's a lot of mention in that in uh, Don Featherstone's book. Um, that's a good way of introducing multiple options that can then be randomised. Um, so it's an another step up in terms of complexity. Um, and then, as per Charles Grant's book, uh, programmed AI, simple rules that govern uh, the automation of an enemy. Now, that can be everything from sort of like a proper programmed type uh, campaign through to the really simple set of instructions that come in the Mr. Babbage section of the Men Who Would Be Kings. You know, simple set of rules that determine how the enemy is going to behave. Under certain senses, this is what they're going to be preferred to do, and so on. Um, and then things like if you're going to bring on reserves and stuff like that, you can randomise where they come on. That way, you've got no again no prejudice in where you're bringing them on. You can, you have to deal with whatever the outcome is. Randomised terrain. And one of the good things that I do is I, I try to uh, I, I randomise sometimes where the terrain is going to be, and then I roll the dice to see which side I'm going to be on. So that there's absolutely no way my setup of the terrain um, can be unconsciously biased by by my strategy, my thinking on how I'm going to run the game. Because at the end of the day, I have no idea which side of this table I'm going to come in on. Um, so th th they're just a few simple. Uh, ideas that I use on a regular basis. There's bound to be tons of others and of course I'd like to hear from you if you've got some really good favourites. Now aside from these actual techniques there are some basic golden rules that I try and apply when I'm thinking about how to solo play a set of rules and whatever set of rules that might be. First and foremost be flexible. You know solo rules that work for one particular scenario might not fit a different scenario or a different set of rules. So be flexible in the, the choices that you make when you're trying to decide what's best for solo game in a particular game. Um, and then just remember, no one's watching. You know, if you want to change something halfway through or, uh, um, you know, you feel that um, something can be done better or differently, um, 
reset, go back, no one's going to stop you. And the whole point of solo gaming is you've got that freedom to make some changes and learn on the fly, which perhaps you wouldn't be able to do if you was in the midst of a proper game down the club or with your mates. Um, you know, no one in, the, in, in down the club is going to let you reset the ball back two turns so you can try a different strategy. You can do that when you're solo playing at home. So solo play can be, I find, think it can be as rewarding as face-to-face -face gaming. Obviously it's different, you know, that social aspect isn't there. But as I say, it's better than not playing at all. Um, and, and there's different rewards that come from solo playing as, a, as opposed to live gaming with, with real people. You know, uh, there's a lot of help and advice out there to help you get started. Uh, tem the techniques that you employ to automate your opponent can be as simple or as complicated as you like. Um, I find it's a great learning tool uh, and certainly better than not playing a game at all. So the question there is, is you know, do you solo play? Uh, have, have, you, have you never considered it? You know, if you do, what are your favourite techniques? Have you got any suggestions? Um, you know, and if not, what's, what's stopping you? Um, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below as always. Um, uh, and, and any suggestions, tips and advice that you'd like to give other gamers love to see it down in the comments below or over on my blog Big Lee's Manager Adventures. Well I hope you feel inspired to play with yourself, you'll excuse the expression, um, and if you've enjoyed this video please consider liking and subscribing and of course sharing. So until next week, uh, I hope you can get in plenty more games, plenty of solo games, uh, stay healthy and of course keep rolling high.